The business motherfucker. The Daily Read. Your source for news, politics, sports, and all things trending. Here's your host, Marcus Gentry. I'm Israeli government spokesman Avi Hyman. This is day 108 of the October 7th war. I will begin today's briefing with the latest figures. Since our last update, the IDF announced that three more soldiers have been killed in battle. Three, Aviad and Shai, bring the total IDF losses since October 7th up to 532. The State of Israel extends condolences to their families in their time of grief. Hamas's ludicrous demand that the IDF forces fully withdraw from Gaza and that we release the Hamas Nukba rapists and murderers who committed the atrocities of October 7th in exchange for the release of our hostages. And if that's not enough, we were told that uh, we would also have to establish a Palestinian state. This would simply be capitulation to Hamas. Welcome to the Daily Read and I am your host Marcus Gentry. For today's show we're going to talk about <clears throat> Israel and why we should cut them loose. For years, decades, Americans, especially white America and the few conservative black people that make up the Republican Party have been telling minorities that slavery is over with and that we should move on and in ways I agree with that uh, I think it's about time for us to tell the Jews in Israel that the Holocaust is over with it's time to move on we are witnessing a genocide that's not up to the level of what Nazi did to them but as you can tell in that first clip, the opening clip, that these people are on television talking about five deaths of the Israeli soldiers that invaded the Palestinians country. The Palestinians have lost hundreds of thousands of people actually the correct number the correct number is about 25,000 people have perished at the hands of the Israeli army <clears throat> this is a touchy subject because religion is involved and we Americans have been basically the watchdogs for the Israeli people for decades ever since we sent them back from Nazi Germany Yes, they were persecuted by Germany. Yes, Hitler tried to destroy them. But now that we've given them nuclear options, missiles, we've propped them up, set them up. I'm going to show you in this show how they're committing atrocities to the Palestinian people. And we need to back off them. And I feel that the only reason... Joe Biden hasn't done anything about it yet is because of the election you see this is the perfect storm for Netanyahu Netanyahu knows that Biden can't go against him on what he's doing with the Palestinians because all of these Christians in America is gonna rise up and vote against him in the coming election and what's gonna wind up happening we're gonna get a Nikki Haley president or Donald Trump president and we don't want that so I'm gonna get into these next clips because I'm gonna show you how not only are they committing atrocities to the Palestinian people but the reason why they're doing it later on in this show we're gonna get to that but I want to go into some more of this uh, these clips because there's a big distraction going on you got America running around fighting some army called the Houthis nobody even heard of these people 
I'm sure over there in, in Europe they probably heard of them or in Africa. But that's a distraction. You got the American news showing you American ships fighting against the Houthis to distract you from what the Israeli people are doing to the Palestinians. Let's get this understood. Let's get into this next clip. The White House keeps pushing for a Palestinian state, something Israel is rejecting. On Sunday, Prime Minister Netanyahu rejected Hamas's demands for a deal to end the war. The terror group sought a ceasefire, the end of Israel's military campaign, and the release of Palestinians held by Israel in exchange for the remaining hostages. If we agree to this, our warriors fell in vain. If we agree to this, we will not be able to guarantee the security of our citizens. We will not be able to return the evacuees safely to their homes. And next October 7th will only be a matter of time. I'm going to stop that right there. This guy right here, Netanyahu, he's almost like the Donald Trump of the Israeli people. Matter of fact, I think he really enjoyed Donald Trump being president. When I tell you people that we have been the lapdogs of the Jewish people for decades. And it's all because of Christianity. Like I said, I, I touch on some touchy subjects. And this is going to be a real touchy subject. Because... Christianity is deeply ingrained in America and half of the people that follow Christianity don't even know the history on it. Don't even know how the current Christianity was affected by the Tribune of Nicaea. A lot of people don't think and understand that King David, Moses, all of these Jewish people who were persecuted in the Bible were not Christians. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. These people were not Christians. Christianity was not around. Americans, Europeans, uh, 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 Romans conquered Northern Africa. And part of that conquering was Israel. They adopted the teachings of Jesus and branched off and made a whole new religion off of this stuff. I'm going to do a story time later about a Jewish man I talked to. He was a Hasidic Jew. And what he told me how real Jewish people, I'm not talking about American Jews. I'm not talking about the people out in California that's running the movie industry. I'm not talking about the people in Las Vegas that's, that has casinos. I spoke to a real Hasidic Jew. And you'll be surprised at what he told me how real Jewish people look at Christians. Let's get back into it. I am not ready to put up with such a fatal injury to Israel's security, so we will not agree to it. Netanyahu also denied a claim by President Biden that the prime minister might be open to some type of two-state solution. My insistence is what prevented for years the establishment of a Palestinian state which would have posed an existential danger to Israel. As long as I am prime minister, I will continue to firmly stand by it. You heard what he said, as long as he's prime minister. Netanyahu has gotten himself caught up in a lot of things in his country. And some people even thought he was going to wind up in jail. A lot of corruption, a lot of things going on in Israel. And now he's playing that Trump card. He knows right now his people are angry at Hamas. His people are angry at the Palestinians because of the kidnappings. And he's using that to stay in power. Netanyahu is dangerous. I don't worry about being counseled by nobody. No big corporation is paying this, uh, this podcast. 
I do this for informational purposes, to bring information to the populace. So I don't worry about being canceled. It's time for us to cut ties with the Jewish people. And you're going to really see how bigoted some of these people are later on in this show. It's going to surprise some of you. A people, a race of people who was killed and, and, and tortured by the Germans act this way. It'll shock you. If someone has a different position, let them show leadership and state their position honestly to the citizens of Israel. Meanwhile, Iran's president vows to avenge Saturday's Israeli strike that killed five Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps leaders in Syria. The strike raises concerns of a wider war between Iran and Israel. We got to get into a little history. We got to get into a little history, people. The Israeli people have been conquered several times by the Egyptians, by the Romans, by the Palestinians, okay? Can you imagine? Okay, we took America. This for my guys who want me to break it down for you. We took America and say the United Nations came into this country as I was saying uh, before we had this phone call, I'm going to have to edit that out. But as I was saying, imagine the United Nations coming into America and telling the United States citizens, you took this country from the Native Americans. So now we're going to give all of the Native Americans in this country, Utah, Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota. We're going to get it to them. Okay. Now just imagine 50 years go by and slowly the Native Americans start taking land in Oklahoma, Missouri, Washington State, Idaho. You Americans, we Americans will be up in arms about that. And this is what's happening in Israel. They gave the, 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 the Israeli people land to get them out of Germany and out of the countries that was killing them. But now they're taking the Palestinian lands, forcing them out of their homes. And the next section of this show, this is what nobody's talking about. I'm going to show you why they're doing this. It's crazy. And no one even is even thinking about it. But I'm going to put it on your mind. Let's get back into this clip. Uh, not only the government, Ephraim, uh, and especially after October 7th, but I would say most of the population really doesn't have an appetite for a Palestinian state. Uh, you know, there was some there on the border uh, of Gaza who were very much in favor of pro-Palestinian state. They were attacked on October 7th. They worked with Palestinians from Gaza. Many of them took, uh, took Palestinians to the hospital. Uh, many of those that lived in the kibbutzim on the border have had a change of heart. Uh, and so, and I think that reflects much of what's happening uh, in the Israeli population right now. Politically, and as you say, you saw that in Netanyahu, he's the one saying that he can prevent the U.S. and the international community from forming a Palestinian state because of the lot of pressure from the Biden administration and others that a two-state solution is the only solution after the war in Gaza is over. This first section, I wanted to show you that Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to stay in power so he can stay out of jail. He's taking a playbook straight out of Donald Trump's playbook. I'm going to show you on the next segment exactly why they are mass killing the Palestinian people. It's going to shock you. It's going to shock you. And and for for people who 
you know, are the lap dogs of the Israeli people because Jesus came from the Jewish the Jewish people. And Jesus is basically, you know, he's who the Christians base their religion off of. I'm hoping y'all following me. This is some tragic stuff. On this next segment, when we get back off this break, I'm going to show you why the Israeli people are mass killing and pushing the Palestinians off their land. We'll be the business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. Framed as a peace deal. It only emphasizes just how important it is that we achieve a full victory in this war. There can be no path toward victory until Hamas is fully destroyed. Moving to an operational update. I just want to play a little bit more of that propaganda because that's what it is. It's propaganda TV to get the American lapdog Christians riled up it's propaganda TV to get the Israeli people riled up to make an excuse of why they're killing Palestinians and pushing them off their land. You got to understand the history of this stuff too. A lot of people just read the Bible and don't read history on the forming of Christianity, uh, the racism, within the Jewish uh, communities, it's crazy. When you start digging into that stuff, it'll blow your mind. And when people start talking about it, you know, the people that's in power try to counsel them. Like I say, I don't care about being counseled. You know, if this ain't for you, it ain't for you. Go to another uh, YouTube channel. Go to another iHeartRadio channel. I don't care nothing about it. I'm going to speak my piece. Now I'm going to show you exactly why the Israeli people are mass killing these Palestinians. A growing number of Jews are returning to Israel. It's part of a fulfillment of prophecy spoken in the Bible. Reporter Charlene Aaron recently spoke with the head of one organization on the front lines of helping the Jewish people make their way home. In the early morning, 130 Ukrainian Jews landed in Tel Aviv to be Earlier this year, immigrants from North America landed at Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion International Airport to make Israel their home. Seeing Jewish people return to Israel is literally watching Bible prophecy unfold. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel all speak of the Jewish return to the land. It says several times in Isaiah, I will lift up a banner to the nations, to the Gentiles. They shall bring your sons and your daughters back. Many see the moment when these new immigrants step onto the tarmac here at Ben Gurion Airport as the time when the words of the Bible written thousands of years ago come to life. There has never been a people who have been exiled for so long who then return to their homeland. Return now starting to come together. You see, that was European news, okay? All the major news channels have a European, North African, South African uh, uh, news stations. They're connected to CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, but they're foreign news. News is played on their televisions. News that we don't see. You got to understand what they're doing. They're forcing these people off their land because when you bring is Israeli people from all over the world back to Israel, they got to live somewhere. You can't just stack these people on top of each other. So they're sacrificing the Palestinians. What does that remind you people of? This is Hitler all over again. The people that almost got destroyed by Hitler is turning around and mass killing Palestinians. 
and nobody speaking up for the Palestinians. These people are being treated like criminals when they're fighting for their lives. They already have a little strip of land that the United Nations said, okay, we're going to give the Israeli people this land. You guys stay over there because we know, you know, y'all don't like each other. I go back to what I said earlier. If the United Nations came into America and said y'all was wrong for that, we're going to give the Native Americans this little land, these few states, this is going to be their land. And then over the years, the Native Americans from all over the world, the Native Americans that live in Japan, the Native Americans that live in uh, Russia, start flying back home. Pretty soon the population is going to swell. That's where the settlements come in at. Okay, those Palestinians been over there for a hundred something years. We're just going to move them out and we're going to uh, build some houses and put the uh, Israeli people that's flying in. We're going to put them here. This is what's going on, people. People create situations and when it blows up in their face, they have these talking points. These people are criminals. These people are, 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 these people hate us. If they give the Palestinians their own country, just like they gave the Jews, and don't take their land, they wouldn't be acting up. They're still not going to like the Jews. But they keep coming in here taking their land. And then we get to another situation where Barack, uh, we're going to go back to Barack Obama. The reason why Christians, a lot of Christians went so hard against Barack Obama is because he called the Jews out. When he was president, he called these people out like what y'all doing? Leave the Palestinians alone. That's when the Christians in America started talking about his birth certificate, started talking about he's not a real American, he's a secret Muslim. Nobody's paying attention to this stuff. Let's continue on. Turn to their language. And so there's the prophetic reality of this that's so huge that each one of these people Isaiah saw, Jeremiah saw, they saw them, they saw this happening, and now we are here to witness it. We are here to be part of it. Their flight marked the one year passing of Yael Eckstein's father, Rabbi Yaquil Eckstein, the founder of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. These people are delusional. Delusional. And the reason why I say these people are delusional is because the holy text of the Bible, the Dead Sea Scrolls, was written so long ago that the predictions might not mean today. Let me under, let me get let me get let me get some understanding for you people, so you so you can understand what I'm saying. When they quoting the Bible verses, they're quoting the Bible verses because they want America to back them on the treachery that they're doing to the Palestinians because it's going to touch the heart of the Presbyterians. It's going to touch the heart of the Baptists. It's going to touch their heart. They're going to say, oh, they're going back home. But that Bible verse might not even mean today because the Israeli people have been displaced and kicked out of their land so many times and have came back so many times. What do you think the whole story of Moses was about? I mean, think about that. The Exodus. 
what did the people of Moses do when they left Egypt? They wandered around, and then they came back home. So, what I'm trying to say is, these people are pulling what they want to pull out of religious text and using it as a weapon. They're using those Bible verses to give some kind of authority to the mass genocide of pushing the Palestinians out. It's crazy. Let's continue on. Family. The fellowship helped smooth the way by providing documentation, logistics, and finances to bridge the gap from their lives in Ukraine to a new start in Israel. This orientation helped provide the information about their next step. Benjamin Haddad is director of Aliyah for the fellowship. We want to get higher the joy and the hope and get less afraid. But there is all the time this moment together in the hearts of the people, the frightened from the future, from the unknown, and the big hope and the happiness about new beginning, a new country, and a new future that is waiting for them. My message today to them was they made the right decision because when they will be there, it will be difficult, but the end will be very successful. Now, if you notice, you didn't see a black face in the crowd. And I'm going to tell you what this is about. These people are flying in. These people are flying in from all over the world. These are Jews that have moved to other places. And now two or three generations later, they're flying back in to Israel. They have to live somewhere. They have to go somewhere. So they're setting up these uh, meetings, meet and greets giving these people what we would call food stamps, stipends, and then telling them, okay, you're going to be living over here in this area right here. More than likely, that area is a Palestinian area. They don't even supposed to be there. And then on top of that, these are some bigots. That's going to touch a lot of nerves until you see this, the, 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 next, the next few clips. I'm going to show you why I said that. These people, are, 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 I'm not going to go so far to say they're worse, they're worse as Hitler, but they're committing genocide. Deborah Minotti heads Operation Exodus, an organization that helps Jews return to their biblical homeland. She says since 2014, there's been a 79% increase of inquiries about assistance to return to Israel. If I can just give glory to God because this is his work. In 1948, Israel had 800,000 Jewish people in the land when they became a nation in one day, like Isaiah said. Now there's over 6 million. So that is incredible over 67 years. And so there- I'm gonna stop that right there. Did you hear what this woman said? It went over a lot of people's heads because they're so caught up in what she's preaching about the Bible. When the United Nations or the Allies, they called it the Allies back in the days, put the Jews back in Israel, it was 800,000. Now it's 6 billion. These people had to push other people out of their lands just to place these people. When you go from a population of 800,000 to 6 million, they stole somebody's land. I'm hoping I'm making some sense to some people out there because I'm a more spiritual person I believe in God. I believe in the higher power. I don't prescribe to a religious doctrine, especially not Christianity. Because I've studied the history on it. If anybody would just stop and think for a second, 
all of the biblical people who was uh, touched by God, all of the biblical people who spoke to God, the burning bush and, you know, walking out in the desert and having an epiphany and sitting under a tree for 90 days and all of those people were not Christian. I'm going to say that again for the people in the cheap seats. All of the people who were prophets in any religious text, whether it's Islam, whether it's Buddhism, whether it's uh, 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 the, the, Jew, the original Hasidic Jewish faith, none of those people were Christian. I want y'all to put it in the I want y'all to go down in the comments after you after you hit listen to this show. Go down in the comments and tell me one person in the Christian faith that communed with God. One person. Put it in the comments. Christianity came as an offshoot of the Jewish faith. And the reason why is because real Jews don't accept Christians. Now we finna get into story time. I was reading a Stephen King book. I was in the library and I was reading a Stephen King book and uh, I seen a Jewish man. He was a Hasidic Jew. I sat at the table with him. I had the book uh, Nightmares and Dreamscapes. That's the name of the Stephen King book that I was reading. It was called Nightmares and Dreamscapes. I had it sitting on the table. I said, hey man, can I ask you a question? He said, yeah. I said, uh, my mother is a very devout Baptist. You know, she's a Christian. Um, what do you think about Christianity? He reached over and grabbed my book. I don't know why he did this. I'm perplexed to this day. He grabbed my book, turned it over, and put it face down. I looked. I said, man, uh, he said, well, you know, I could tell he was trying to explain to me some stuff, but he didn't want to do it. For some strange reason, maybe, and put this in the comment, anybody that knows why he did this that's a Jewish person out there, explain it to me. Because I had the feeling that he didn't want to talk to me about religious matters with the face of that book up. He flipped it over, turned it on the back, because it was just words on the back. And... Me and him had about an hour long conversation. We went from religion to black Americans with their pants sagging and stuff like that. I'm talking about we had a long conversation. But he told me, he said, you Americans is, uh, you, you're not Jewish. You know, and, and, and. He explained it like it's fake. Understand what I'm saying because I know I'm going to upset some people. The way he explained it to me was you're not, you're not following the original Jewish faith so there's no commingling. But the Christians have been lapdogs for the Jewish people for decades. Okay, 
אני רואה את עצמי כמיוחד יותר, אבל ודאי שווה זכויות. אוקיי, okay, מה זה אומר מיוחד יותר? באיזה מובן? מישהו שלא מבין. במובן הדתי. אוקיי, okay, שזה נותן לך מה? במובן הדתי אני חושב שיש לי ייעוד uh, גדול יותר. הייעוד שלי הוא חשוב יותר. Do you see Jews and non-Jews as the same? Uh, are you Jewish? Yeah. Are they Jewish? No. So what's the purpose of the question? People outside want to know, from a Haredi point of view, do you see Jews and non-Jews as the same? I'll, I'll answer you politically. In the eyes of Hashem... Well, I don't Hashem, want political. Yeah, okay, fine, go. In the eyes of Hashem, we all are created. In the eyes of God. We are all created, as, uh, but as you know, as the uh, Chumash, the Bible says, uh, Jew, the Jews are the chosen nation. So you can't exactly consider that when you're, there's testimony from Hashem that we are different. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. California only has 100 Ethiopian Jews, including Samu and his family. Arriving at the age of three, Esther now 40 tells us about her school career in Beverly Hills. I went to a Jewish private school from about, let me see, about five years old until I was about... 14, right before high school. Um, it was interesting. <laughs> I was the only black girl there. Uh, everybody else was white around me. I remember that there was a rabbi in our school. Actually, he was a substitute teacher, and he came for the day. And I remember coming back from recess, and he stopped me in front of everybody, and he said, stop, what are you doing here? And being an eight-year-old or seven-year-old, I think, during that time, what would somebody answer? Of course, I go to school here. And he said, well, you're not supposed to be here. And I said, why? And he said, because you're black. Hey, what's up? It's Rabbi Sandra. I thought I would start a like story time uh, on this app to talk a little bit about my experiences, uh, my racist experience and my anti-Semitic experiences as a rabbi. Often, there is the intersection between anti-Semitism and racism. So the first story I'm going to tell is, is a pretty recent one. Um, somewhere around 2018, 2019, I was serving as the, um, when I was serving as the, uh, the campus rabbi for Elon University, the, um, a parent and a daughter came in and they um, wanted, they came to a and they wanted to meet the rabbi. And the first person they met was the assistant director and the parent, the mom was like, is the rabbi in? I want to meet, the, I want to meet the rabbi. Um, you know, because they were touring and they were on a campus tour. Um, and they wanted to, of course, learn about the Jewish community. And um, so the, hill, the assistant director contacted me and I came down the stairs to meet the, the mother and daughter. And the mother looks up and down at me and she's like, you're, you're the rabbi. And I said, I am. And I introduced myself, shaked, shaked her hand and all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the mother at that point asked me, are you, are you ordained? And I said, yes, I am. It's an odd question. Um, but the mom continued to ask that question and some form of that question Oh, um, of whether or not I was ordained. And after about the third time, I looked at the daughter and the daughter was noticeably uncomfortable. Um, and my audience is the daughter because I want, it's the daughter that's going to make the decision about whether or not to come to Elon. So I was like, I need to shut this down some way, shape or form and not be too rude. So what I said to the mother, I said, you know, if you come to my office, I have a business card that um, proves that I'm the rabbi. Silly, but it did it did uh, break it down. Now, for those of you that may be <laughs> confused about why this is racist, um, 
what 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 nationally ranked university would hire an, a non ordained rabbi? I had to prove at some point that um that I was a rabbi. This woman could not get past this to see that I am in fact a rabbi. So let me know what you think about this. Surprising report from Israel today where officials are taking seriously a recent upsurge in spitting and hitting attacks on clergy and the vandalism of Christian sites. Christians in Jerusalem's old city say they've been repeatedly assaulted. So how are Christian leaders responding? CBN's Julie Stahl brings us the story from Jerusalem. Attacked in their places of prayer, in their cemeteries and on the streets. Christians in Jerusalem's old city say they are often harassed, spit on, and even physically attacked by religious Jewish youth. Children pray with the Torah, a part of the Hebrew Bible. They are some of Ethiopia's last remaining Jews. About 4,000 Jewish Ethiopians, who call themselves Beta Israel, live here in Gondor, a small city in the north. This school teaches children about their Jewish faith, but also prepares them for a possible move to Israel. If they learn Hebrew and if they learn about their religion, it'll help. They'll create mutualism and integrate within the society there and support one another in all matters. We came to Ethiopia because God dispersed the Beta Israel into the four cardinal directions. So we came down from Egypt. We came here following the shores of the Blue Nile. Others went to America, Germany and many other countries. Under Israeli law, Jews are allowed to move to the country. But the Israeli government doesn't view the Beta Israel of Gondor as Jewish under strict religious law. The business, motherfucker! The Daily Read.